Hello, welcome to my channel. I'm Laura Cepeda from Mexico. I'm very happy to have all of you here. Today, I'm in my mother's house because my house is getting fixed and there is a lot of noise. That's why I'm here. And also because I love to come and visit my mother and eat together. Today, I will show you how to knit something so pretty. I hope you like it. It is this triangle. Look, look all the colors. And you can wear it like this. Or like this. Or with this to the back. You can use it in many different ways. And most of all, it looks good with everything. I love this yarn. It is called Intelligent Yarn because while you are knitting, it will be forming different shapes and colors and waves. It is a very beautiful material, high quality, and we have it in the online store in Spain. Look how beautiful it looks. What do you think of today's tutorial? I'm sure you will love it, so let's start. To make this garment you are going to need two skin yards of alice motif and one yard of other color of middle thickness and one needle of number 6 and one hook of number 4. So let's start. But before I would like to show you all the different colors that we have in the online store. This is the one I'm going to use. Look at this one with blues and this one with shades of brown and blue, it's beautiful. This one, look, this one with green and shades of blue looks beautiful knitted. Look at this one in shades of brown and the other kind of blue and this one in green. This one with blue and gray, it's perfect for boys, it looks so beautiful. And this one in shades of gray and black is this one. No one wanted to buy this color. But as soon as I knit it, everybody wanted this color. I'm sure if I have knit with another color, it will sell too. But it's that. When it's knitted, it looks so different and beautiful. I'm sure all the colors will look good with anything you knit. Yes, it is perfect for any kind of break that you would like to knit. This yarn will look good on vests, cardigans, scarves, in anything. Well, I already show all the colors, now it is time to start. Okay, for this project you are going to cast on 3 stitches. Make one loop and make a knot. Cast on like this. Here we have one and here we have three. Now knit them with garter stitch. We will start with the bottom of the garment. We will make the half of the triangle one row with the garter stitch and the next row of four. So we can make a stockinette stitch. Now look, we will increase just in one side. So I decided to increase in this side. The first stitch will be knitted from the side you are increasing, okay? Here where is this space between the other stitch and the other, add one stitch like this and remember this will be one row of four. Turn over and in this side we won't increase stitches, okay? In this side we will continue with garter stitch and here we will pass the first stitch without knitting, okay? Continue and at the end increase one stitch more and knit the last stitch like this. Now the poor road. Remember that in this side we will increase. So in this side we will knit the first stitch and increase one stitch right away. 
So you will increase at the beginning and at the end of the rows. So we will continue making pork. It is very easy. One side you will knit with garter stitch and in the other side you will increase stitches to form the triangle shape. Remember, the side that we are not increasing pass the first stitch without knitting and make garter stitch. Look. Increase one stitch and knit the last, like this. Look how in this part is straight and here we can see how it is increasing. It is very important that the side where we are going to increase never leave the first stitch without knit because if not it will look tight in this part. So knit it and in the next stitch increase right away. At the end and in the beginning we will increase, okay? And now we will continue with the poor row. Look, so far it has to look like this. Here is a straight and here we are forming the peak. Look. Like this we will continue increasing until we have 105 stitches. Pass the first stitch, make garter stitch. like this and you will stop at the end to increase here is where you are going to increase and then knit the last okay turn over and knit the first stitch and right away increase one stitch here and continue making pour all the road. Remember that this will be the, the half of the first triangle. The other half will be made like this exactly as we are doing now, but I will explain it later. Don't worry. Okay, so like this, increasing stitches just in this side until we have 105 stitches. Look how is it looking. Here we have 105 stitches. You have to be in this side where you are increasing because when we bend off, I want that thread ends here. Look all the colors and waves that are forming. It looks so beautiful. Well, here is the straight part and here is the side where I was increasing the stitches. Look. It doesn't look tight because I need the first stitch, as I told you. Remember in this size, always need the first one and then right away increase one stitch. Well, here is the half of a triangle. Now we are going to bend off. Like this, take two stitches knit them and come back with one take your time do it slowly and the most important don't bend off tie again take two and come back with one it's like you were knitting two together and then take one back like this all the road until you have one stitch left When you finish to bend off all the 105 stitches, you will have something like this. And here we finish the first part of our triangle. Look how beautiful it looks. Now we are going to cast on the stitches on the other side where we need a straight to form the other triangle. So this is the triangle. Here is the side where we were increasing. Now, I repeat, we are going to cast on the stitches here in this side to form the other part of the triangle. I suggest that if you have left material of the first skein of yarn, cut 
and add a new skein of yarn to match the colors. Cut and make a knot with the new thread matching the colors. Look. This is a new skein of yarn, so I will make a knot. And now we are going to start casting on over this side. Well, to start casting on, count the stitches. I already counted and we have 60. Counting the space that we have here, we have 53 stitches. So, it means that in 7 stitches we will add 2 to have 60. Okay, so let's start casting on like this. Remember to cast on in the forward side. This one is the backward side. Well, in the forward side, take a stitch like this. Remember that just in 7 stitches we will add twice, ok? If we add 2 stitches in the same stitch, the stitch will look bad. So for the first one, take one part of the stitch and then for the other stitch, take the other thread like this. Remember at the end to have 60 stitches. I will continue, remember just in 7 add twice. When I have 60 I will see you. Well, here I finish. It, so far it has to look like this. Remember that it must have to be 60. Now we are going to make the first row. If we are in the backward side, make 4. We are going to reduce the stitches in the same side where we were reducing before. Here is where we reduce, so here we will start reducing and in this side we will knit a straight. But for now in this row we won't reduce, just pour. And here we will start reducing. So see you when I finish. Well, here I finish the row and I will arrive to the straight side. Well, here we will pass the first stitch because we are not reducing. Remember, when we reduce, we need the first stitch, but this is not the case. Well, look, when you finish casting on the stitches, uh, I get ahead and I make as it shows. For example, if you are in the backward side, make pour, and if you are in the forward side, make garter stitch. Remember that you must have 97 or 100 stitches. Here I started to reduce stitches in the side where I was reducing before. If we want to have the same angle, we will reduce like this. Make one pour, one garter, one pour, and one garter, and in this one reduce. For example, here I have to reduce. Okay, how are we going to reduce? We will reduce like this. Take two stitches together and knit. All the other stitches will be poor. Here we will finish the row, then one garter row and then pour and again garter row and in the next one row we will reduce. Here I reduce, I will continue making pour and then I will stop to explain you how you can see if you already reduced or not. Here I reduce, here no. We will reduce every four rows. One pour, one garter, one pour, and one garter row, so every four rows. So far, it has to look like this. The most important is to have the same angle like in the other side. Well, I will continue making the pull row, and then I will make the garter row, and I will stop to show you how it looks. Okay, here I finish. I will count the rows like this. One, two, three, 
and 4. So in the 4 I will reduce again, you will see. For example, here you can see two stitches together. Here I reduce and here I didn't. And here I have to reduce. Remember, it's every four rows. Okay, take two, knit them, come back with one and make four. All the row, one, two, three, and in the fourth, again reduce. Okay, so let's continue like this and we will stop when we have a piece of the triangle like this one. Because from here we will start reducing one each two rows, one each two rows, one each two rows, until we end here in the peak. It doesn't have to be exactly one side to another, it is so difficult. We will try to make the most similar possible, but don't worry. We will continue reducing one each four rows and from here we will reduce in each two rows one stitch until we have three stitches left to bend off. As I told you before, we are going to reduce one stitch here. Remember, we are going to make three different reductions. At the beginning we were reducing one stitch every four rows, then one every two rows, and then we are going to reduce at the beginning and at the end of the row. This is for to finish more quickly and also because at the end of the peak it will be bigger and it won't be like the one that we want. Remember, to compare always with the other side, I am here almost. So we are missing this peak. We are going to start reducing one stitch each row, at the beginning and at the end. Ok, I will continue and with this I will finish. And then we will start making the edge. Ok, so let's continue and see you when I finish. I finish with three and I bend them off. Look how it looks when we reduce. Remember, here we reduce one each row, then one each two rows, and then one each four rows. So now with the hook, we will start making half double crochet all around the garment. So this will be the final touch. And you have to pay attention to not tie and not to distort the garment. Distribute the stitches and make sure it will flatten the garment. Ok, so we will continue like this all around the garment. When we finish we will steam iron to put the final touch on it. And then we will add pom-poms. So far it has to look like this. If you want, you can use the skein of yarn of the plain color that we have, but it's up to you. Both ways looks beautiful too. I will continue making the edge so you can see how it is. Do it slowly, so take one, put, take, and here we have three. Pull through all the threads and again, this is half double crochet. Let's continue like this all around the garment. Look how it is. If you think it is loose, just um, make half double crochet with one stitch. It has to look good, it's dependent, you have to, to see what is missing. When you arrive to the corners, make three together to not lose the shape of the peak. When you finish your row, make the last half double crochet and bend off. But before, you have to see that all the row looks good. That it keeps the shape of the peak. Ok, once you think it looks good, join the last one with the first one. Like this, make a chain and pull. 
Don't cut this thread, leave it long and hide it through the garment to ensure it won't undo. Hide them until they disappear, with the help of your hook. Once you finish to hide all the threads, let's start making the pompons. I will use the plain color to make them. I am going to use this pomponer to make to make them. If you don't have something like this, use a piece of cardboard almost with the same white of the poles. I will pull the poles here and this white is good for our pom-poms. Now take two threads of the plain color and take both threads and cut a long thread like this one. Now tie these threads over here and leave them there. Now take both threads and stuck them here. And make a knot. Start rolling around the poles. You have to count how many times you roll the threads to make the other pom poms like this one. Do it slowly, and it's very important to not tie while you are rolling. I will count 80 laps. Here I'm finishing, 77, 78, 79 and 80. Now cut. And with these threads that we leave here, make a knot. Just right in the middle and tie it. Tied a little bit more right in the middle, remember. Okay, tied a little bit more. I will make another knot to make sure. And I will tie it again. I'm going to make another knot. I want to be sure. Now take them Okay, and now got here Okay, now take these long threads and very carefully and slowly cut through all these threads, right just in the middle, all the way until here. Okay, cut, 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 be patient and be carefully. For this garment we are going to make five pom-poms like this one. Look, here I'm finishing. Now, just prune the pompon to form a perfect and round pompon. Okay, once you feel your pompon is ready and you like the way it is, Well, now I'm going to tie up in one of the pigs. Here I already made the other five. Every 15 centimeters, I tie up one. Here one, and here I made another. 
every 15 centimeters. Okay, now I'm going to tie up the, the last one, boom, boom. With the help of your hook, take these two long threads. Remember that we leave these threads at the beginning. Well, it's very important that you don't cut them because with these threads we are going to tie up. Well, I will make a knot. I will make it twice or three times. I want to ensure the pom-poms won't fall when I want to wash it or when I want to wear it. Okay, I think it is ready. Well, now tie a little bit more and cut these threads. So look how it looks. Now, let's steam iron with a wet rag. Iron this garment, but just with the steam. The iron just will touch the garment. Be careful, don't put the iron directly. Pressing is not recommended, because if not, the material will lose properties and it won't look fluffed. Once you iron from one side, Turn over and iron the other side like you did before. Well, what do you think? It looks beautiful, right? Look all the colors and the shapes that it forms. I will wear it, okay? So what do you think? I love it. Hope you like it and make it for yourself or for your friends. Share this video, I'm sure you will make it. It's so pretty like this one. You can knit for sale or as a gift, it will perfect too. Remember, if you want the materials that I use in all my videos, you can buy them in my online store, lauracepera.es. You can find there all the accessories, yarns, and all the colors that I use. I invite you to visit our website. I'm sure you're gonna love it and also visit me in all my social medias. See you very soon in the next tutorial. So if you like this video, give me a like, subscribe and send all your comments. I love to read them and thanks for all your nice comments. I'm very grateful and lucky to have you as my friend. Thanks again. See you in the next video. Share it, comment and leave all your love here. Bye!